Look at the people you love. Your friends, your family, your partner. And now tell me how you feel in relation to them. Guys, it's happening. Today is the day. It's market setup day. I am kind of nervous, though I think I feel more confident than usual about it because I've done like markets and stuff like that. But this is like another level of nerve wracking because this is like an actual convention. And I feel like this might be my niche and this might be my time, but I don't know. I'm going to my first anime convention. You see, I'm a commercial artist and it's something that I just gotta do. This was my first time going and I think being an artist, your self-worth is kind of constantly under attack in some ways, mostly due to the opinions of others. Because your creativity, your creative mind is yours, and if somebody doesn't like what you've created, I feel like it kind of feels like they don't like a part of you. How do you feel? I'm excited. I think it'll be good. This is my first convention, so I guess we'll see what happens. I think when you feel like your self-worth is under attack, it really helps to have somebody who cares about you by your side. This is my partner Aru, and they're always around when I'm doing these crazy events, and it's really nice to have some sort of support. So it's day two of Mac being out at the Anime Expo, and there was a really exciting update today because Mac has made back the vendor fee and also their half of the hotel fee. So now all that they're making is pure profit. So yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. I was pretty happy in that moment. But when I got home, I realized how much this con wasn't any different from all the other markets I went to. And I felt sort of stagnant in a way. <laughs> So, I guess you guys are wondering what happened with the market and stuff and why I haven't talked about it yet and I'm out here skating. Well, I use skating to kind of like de-stress. No, I'm not that good. I'm still learning how to consistently do ollies, but here's the breakdown, okay. So, I know you guys just want to know the numbers. So a total of $175 for the booth fee. Now, how much I made with the booth fee? I made a grand total of $525, $525 grand total. That's how much I made. So profit wise with just the booth fee and everything, I made 350 bucks. But I was in San Antonio and so it's not my like home city. So I had to get a hotel and that was $250. So minus $350, well, $100 basically was my profit for two days. So $50 a day is not that great. I felt like I wasn't successful with this convention at all. It made me question whether or not this was even for me, or even if my art was good at all and I was just wasting my time. <sighs> I know life is unfair sometimes, but there's a part of me that thought that maybe it could be fair if you really tried like super hard. Like if you're really tried and true with your desires and what you wanted, like if you wanted to pursue a creative career and stuff like that, you could really do it if you put all your energy into it and you spend a lot of time. But I don't know anymore. And I think during these low points, it's good to have an outlet that has nothing to do with the low at all. And for me, that outlet is skateboarding. It's just something that I can take time to progress at and not have to worry about any external things. And the low points don't even last forever, and that's a good thing. There comes a point where you just gotta pick yourself up and try again. Right here we got our Pinocchio drawing. The next one over there we got our um, Jungle Book one. And then back here is our Tarzan one. I feel 
like my value for myself has really changed since I quit my job almost a year ago. And it's like, a lot of the time, I feel like I was doing work for other people. And I was, but it wasn't just for other people, like my manager and stuff, but it was like for other people that I loved, like supporting them and making sure that I had this like, you know, kind of buffer for everybody that I knew and even myself in a way, like I had this buffer. And I guess you could say that I must have valued myself in that sense because I wanted to help myself just be stable. But I don't think I valued something that was also very important to me, which is my creativity. I really brushed that aside. I didn't really work on it. And I have been doing that since I was a kid. And I decided to go on this path of like going to college and stuff. When I was younger, I'd always say that I never wanted to be an animator. And that was the job that I really, really wanted. And I just saw people who get into animation, they would get burned out and they would like hate animating and hate this passion that they grew up doing. And I didn't want that for myself. And I still don't want that for myself. But then when I quit and I started pursuing art, I realized that it was super fun. At first it was kind of like, I was pushing my creative creativity in ways that was detrimental. And I didn't like what I was creating. But now it's like, I'm pushing myself to do more creative things. And it also feels really nice. And I feel like I can get up every morning and I can create something cool and I can do something really like something that no one's ever seen before. No one's ever seen before. I feel like I'm stable again, but I know I'll always have these ups and downs of whether or not my art is good, whether or not what I'm doing is worth it. But learning self-worth is a process, but whenever you overcome that self-doubt and the feeling of defeat, I think it builds up this tower of some great and grand self-belief. If I didn't value my creativity enough to quit my job, at the time and actually pursue it, I would have never found this like fire. And this fire I always refer to in like my journals and stuff. And it's kind of like this deep feeling of like rightness in your body, like in your soul. And when you do something that like ignites the fire, makes it grow stronger and stronger, it's like your creativity is like unmatched.